Welcome to Collectability. Today, we're going to discuss how to destroy a Patek Philippe in five easy steps. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you some of the things that uh, I've personally seen others do to their watches so that uh, this can be a bit of a warning to you of how to properly care for your Patek Philippe watches so they truly can last for another generation. One of the most dangerous things for a watch is magnetism. Magnets are surrounded, surround us all of the time, whether behind computers, um, in refrigerators. We just need to be cautious with our watches and aware of the magnetism around us, in particular with electronics. Um, there's one gentleman I, I remember, may he rest in peace. He would eat ice cream constantly and would reach into his freezers for a pint. And his Patek Philippe was going in and out of the freezer next to the strong magnet, and it absolutely uh, destroyed his watch. And uh, that's just a careful warning of how you should care for your pieces and keep them away from magnetism. Now, just as a bit of an experiment here, I have the most powerful magnet uh, that I could find uh, available um, for private use. And here is uh, an old pocket watch. And uh, I took out the escapement so that you can see how it could actually stop the steel parts within the watch in a most uh, graphic way. So here we go. See, and it stops. You remove the magnetism and it starts again. Now, what happens with a watch when it's magnetized is it tends to go faster. The, the hairspring becomes uh, magnetized and the watch continues to run uh, uncontrollably. So just, uh, I'll exemplify give an example of that one more time of what happens when a magnet hits a watch, it stops, but it's the damage that's done afterwards that you have to be most concerned about. So you never ever want to have a Patek Philippe near a magnet. I mean, here's just an example of, uh, of a 5711. If it gets too close, oh, uh, the watch stops. Keep rolling. We need to be very careful with these magnets around our watches or they could destroy them. Let's go on to water resistance. I have seen so many rust buckets go through service. Watches that were submerged in water, in particular vintage watches, pocket watches that uh, could not be restored. So when it comes to water, you have to be aware it's not your friend. Even with water resistant watches, you need to be cautious because water resistant watches, um, uh, the gaskets need to be checked annually. You need to make sure that the water resistance is, is intact. Um, this particular piece has, has not been tested, um, but uh, we'll give it a bit of a test right now. So we'll, we'll see what happens when my 5711 goes in the water. Ah, as you can see, this is also a lesson in, in, in shock resistance. So we need to be quite careful with our watches because if there was a crown that was unscrewed, or something that could have um, potentially damaged, oh crap. <laughs> Things can <laughs> go rather unexpected ways when your watches are submerged in water. So even with your water resistant watches, my point being, you need to keep very careful with uh, when they're around <laughs> water. Let's talk about losing boxes and papers. I have seen example after example of watches being separated from their boxes and their papers. Sometimes it's people throwing them away. Sometimes it's people don't care, they lose track of them. More often than not, it's because of divorce. I see the watch goes with one spouse and the box and papers goes uh, with another and they're never reunited again. Now what this all means at the end of the day is your, your modern watch can lose upwards to 20, 30% of its value by losing boxes and papers. So it's, it's very important to keep these documents safe, labeled, documented, and you, you don't want to lose them. It's, it's very important for the value of your watch. Now, restoration. I have seen so many examples of hacks going inside watches, absolutely destroying them um, from changing bracelets, changing straps, from going into the movements and, and completely destroying um, the, the screws, the escapements, you name it. So you need to be very careful who is approaching your watch and what they're doing with those timepieces. The safest bet, of course, is to go to an authorized service center, an authorized Patek Philippe service center, uh, or have a watchmaker or restorer that you know and that you trust 
so that the watches get the best care possible. Now, last but not least is shock resistance. It is very important with these watches not to drop them or have them subjected to any shock whatsoever. You need to be very careful that these timepieces are cared for and aren't subjected to the damage, carelessness. So let's be a little more cautious with our watches and try not to damage these, these fine works of art. Now, for an extreme example, so here we have butcher block, a Nautilus. Don't forget your safety glasses. Good size hammer. And let's see what's possible. All right, I think I'll open the clasp here and uh, let's see. Wow, quite resilient. Still holding tight. Yes, I've seen that occur many times. The first thing to go, the spring bars. Wow. All right. Let's see what happens with the movement. Carefully observe. It's still running. Interesting. Wow, just some uh, some dents and some scratches. We'll, we'll go for the face. We'll go for the two-handed move. Wow. All right, um, still some dents, but uh, quite resilient. They make these 5711s quite well. I think we need a bigger tool. I think a rusty hammer will do the trick. All right, here we go. Oh, crap. There's now glass everywhere. Let's just shake that off. The rotor is still intact. There's some pieces um, that are quite unidentifiable. Uh, apologies for the expletive, but I did not expect that. All right, here we go. Ah. Let's go back to my, uh, my favorite tool. Mm. It's still ticking. So far, we've lost six o'clock and the nine o'clock batons, but uh, uh, they're not so well riveted. But let's see. Oh, there is literally sapphire crystal everywhere right now. Let's just shake that out. That is, uh, that is extraordinary. All right, the dial has seen better days, but we'll, we'll continue with our uh, assessment of shock resistance here. Oh. It advanced five seconds. Here we go. Wow, a crown at this point in time. I think it's time to put this watch back together. Can you lend me a hand?